Hello, Pedro. Hello, Pedro. Hello, Pedro. Do you say show jumpers or, or do you say show jumpers if it's the horse? I mean, he's he's the rider. Show 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 jumping riders. Yeah. He is not a show jumper. Uh. <laughs> Hi, Star Fam. Today is a very very special day because I'm going to get to talk to the Peder Fredriksson. <laughs> I'm a long time fan of him and the reason why I'm getting to talk to him today is because Star Stable is doing a collab together with H&M. We love horses. Thank you so much H&M for this opportunity and making this dream come true for us all. You guys have been asking us for a really long time how the horses are made at Star Stable. And although Piede is one of the world's best show jumping riders, his horses might be a tiny, tiny bit different from our digital horses. I figured I would pet two birds with one hand and give both of you a little insight into my job as a 3D artist at Star Stable. Peder should have been here today, but we at Star Stable are socially distancing, so we decided to do this online instead. Hello Peder! It's so nice to have you here today. Uh, my name is Lisa. I work as a 3D artist at Star Stable and I've been working here for about three years uh, as a, a horse artist. So I've been responsible for creating the 3D models of the horses, uh, but also the textures, like the different color variations and markings and stuff like that. So that's my job at Star Stable. But who are you for our viewers? Yeah, nice to meet you too. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Fredriksson. I'm a professional um, show jumping rider. I once, in 2000, 2008, I met you in Stockholm International Horse Show in Globen. <laughs> and mm. I actually, I was looking in my lockers for this for a very long time when I knew that I was going to talk to you. I have an autograph <laughs> from 2008, you know, once when you were sitting with Malin and Jan Brink. <sighs> <laughs> and oh, I was like, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, a little yeah, girl yeah. back then, because now I'm 26. 2008, yeah, that was some time ago. Oh my God, oh my God, yeah. So today I'm going to show you some footage of when I, and together with my team, where we created the Marvari horse in the game. I'm really looking forward to um, see how you are doing it, because, you know, I'm, I'm also a graphic designer and I'm, I'm, uh, I find it very interesting. I always wondered how you do it, so I'm, I'm yeah, really yeah. looking forward to this session. I have shared a link with you to a video. And I think you had the video in front of you right now, right? Yeah, I have. Super. This is the software called Maya, Autodesk Maya. That's what we use at Star Stable. We can also use something called 3ds Max. And now you can already see a finished horse. But that is because mm. what you see right now is one of our former horses, the Akaltik. Since we don't want to invent the wheel every time, we have like about uh, 50, almost 50 different breeds in the game currently. We thought that a horse looks like a horse. It doesn't matter if it's like a warm blood or a pony uh, or a draft horse or a baroque breed or something like that. They always have four legs and a neck and a body. So here, for example, the Mavari horse, oh. they, they tend to be much smaller than the Akaltiks. So right now I'm making it a bit more slimmer. And uh, if I fast more forward here, we can see when I'm making the iconic ears because the Akaltiks have, you know, those very straight ears. But here I'm starting yeah. to rotate and shape and make them so that they point inwards. So everything is like you're modeling with clay inside the digital uh, software. That's fantastic. It's the first time I see that. I've done a bit of modeling with clay myself, but uh, this, this, looks, this looks easier. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about the body shapes and different anatomy types and so on. Uh, what kind of body shapes do you think that a good jumper should have? Actually, it doesn't really matter as long as they jump good. They should have a good brain, yeah. a big heart and strong legs. So another question for you, Peter. If you could choose any of your former companions or nowadays the horses that you train to become a 3D model and like become a 3D horse in a game, which horse would it be? Uh, it would be H&M All-In. 
because uh, because he's a, he's a legend. You know, he's done so many good things, and yeah. he's, I would say he's one of the best horses in the world. Whenever the the body is finished modeled on the horse, it also needs tack. And since the Marwari horse, when I looked at different references, since the horse has something like very oriental bride, a lot of medallions and stuff like that, I wanted to give the players that kind of uh, true feeling that they're really riding this very exotic horse. So oh, here, nice. same thing as with the Akalteke body, I'm using already a bridle that I have created before in the game, and I'm starting to shape it into the oriental bridle. So the horse has a lot of ornaments here on the forehead, but also on the nose band. And what you see here, the planes that I'm modeling, is something called an alpha plane. So they're not going to be like this, square formed. I'm actually going to manipulate them into looking into the shape that I want it to be, with something called an alpha map. You can cut away the shape that you don't want and keep the shape that you want. <laughs> so this is how it can look like whenever the model also has a texture. So here you can see that those planes that were this rectangular shape, they actually have become these ornaments that look a bit like these, this drop shape. Very interesting. <laughs> so a very random question for you. If you have to get rid of all your tack pieces, except for one, which tack piece would you like to keep? <laughs> uh, I got a lot of questions. I never got that question before. It was nice. a good one. <clears throat> uh, what would I keep if I had? I would probably keep. I use um, I use uh, a halter, a rope halter, mm. which I do some uh, groundwork with, like a lunch term and so on. I would probably keep that one because that one I can also ride in, and uh, mm. Mm. yeah, that I would I would keep that one. So whenever the horse model, the freedom model is done uh, on the horse, you have to be able to paint on it, right? It's, it's not supposed to be just this gray clump of clay. So this is going to look a bit scary because now I'm starting to divide the horse into different parts. The UV I'm wrapping, I can uh, explain it as like, think of an earth globe. An earth globe has this map and this map has like mountains and roads and everything. But in the beginning, this map was just flat. It was like a 2D plane. And then you have to take this map and wrap it around the Earth globe in order to get the paint on the sphere. So right now, you see, I, I have divided the head, the legs. I have uh, cut open all these pieces and put them out on a 2D plane and placed them inside this little square. And it's a bit like a puzzle because all these pieces have to fit inside this square. And you see there, now that's the head that I'm making bigger, because the bigger these puzzle bits uh, that are called UV shells, the bigger these shells are, the more information I can later paint on these shells. I'm really curious how what, it, what this is going to look like yeah. when you finished. So during the process of making a horse, I use uh, three different softwares, sometimes even four. So modeling in Maya, and then texturing in 3D coat and Photoshop. But here in 3D coat, you can see the horse. It's still just a gray clump of clay. To the right, you can see this gray square, and that's actually the texture. So right now it's just gray. But from the 3D coat software, I can easily bake light and shadows. So whenever I'm done uh, with the baking process, I'm going to project my work here in 3D Coat, I'm going to project it to Photoshop. So here the window that I have now is in Photoshop. And right now it's just gray, but in one second, there we go. Now we have the updated light and shadow uh, map. So I'm painting just hello <laughs> and then a smiley face on the butt of the horse. And I'm saving this and in three, two, one, there we go. Now everything, all the information that I painted in Photoshop is projected on the 3D horse in 3D coat. Now it's going to be a time jump into the future. I think I've been maybe working on this horse for 
maybe another two weeks, something like that, where I've been painting in all the details in the coat. And I have to say that this is very, for me, uh, a very meditating process. Since I've heard that you are quite the artist yourself, uh, would you like to talk about a bit what you do and like why you create? And Yeah, I, I, I always liked to paint since I was uh, young. And ho the whole, my whole life I've been painting and then uh, when I started writing, um, I always done the graphic designing and painting like almost half half until until the moment I got uh, H&M all in, mm. and then I realized I had a very special horse, and then I decided to do 100% uh, uh, with the horses. Uh -huh. So the last uh, yeah, like six seven years, I, I haven't done so much painting at all actually. Yeah. Um, and not so much graphic designing. Uh, I mainly focused on, on writing and then mm. now for the moment is uh, competitions almost every weekend for me. So I, uh, when I'm home, I don't have so much time anyway. I try to spend the time with my kids and training the other horses and then the weekends I'm at shows. So for the moment there's no time to paint. But yeah. maybe one day in the future I will pick it up again because I really enjoy it. What used to inspire you to create things? <clears throat> Mainly horses, actually. I only paint horses. I oh, love to you paint do. horses. And yes. it's like when you know horses, you know the feeling to touch them and ride them and so on. I think it's a, it's a big advantage. Now, the next step is to start taking the horse to the animators. In, in this clip, I'm having a discussion with two of our animators. And they are working with uh, putting in the skeleton on the horse and making it bendable. And uh, what we were discussing here is how the mane is supposed to bend. So we have to put bones, it sounds very weird, but you have to put bones in the mane in order for it to be able to bend the model. So uh, since the Marwari horse has a very thin and oily mane, it was important to make the mane kind of stick to the neck, but then the end the tops were going to float in the wind. So then the bones had to support that. I wouldn't buy a horse moving like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> if we would, would have worked um, in the office, because right now at Star Stable, we are working from home, uh, then we would have, like I would have went over to the animators and pointed at their screen. But now we could solve this in this telephone uh, call. And I, I have to ask you actually, Peter, like we have such a strange situation this year with uh, COVID-19. And for us, it has affected that we have to work from home and we're not back in the office yet. Um, but how, how has it been for you and with all the competitions and like... Yeah, it's been a big, big change, of course. Um, um, because, um, you know, we were... Everybody was planning for the Olympic Games and we had the big hopes and we were really going for that. And then from one day to another, it all changed. So we had to stay home and... You know, it, it, it's the same for everybody. And uh, in one one way, I in the beginning, I really enjoyed it actually to be able to stay home with no stress because I knew everybody else was also staying home. So we could have a little bit of a holiday. All top riders could have a little bit of a holiday with, with no stress that we were losing ranking points or losing out. Mm, getting to know the um, horses maybe even more like exactly. quality time. Could spend, yeah. yeah, could spend some more time in the, in, in the stable and work some more with the young horses and teach our students a bit more and so on. Uh, and now lately, the last months, it's actually been a lot of competitions. You know, I've been away almost every week and now it's still going on until the indoor season starts then we will see then maybe we're gonna have a break again yeah but for sure it's been a the biggest change is actually not having a championship to work forward to yeah uh, normally otherwise you have a big goal you're working to but now it's a bit more you know ran, random shows like one show here and one yeah. show there and you're not really on the way on the way somewhere which is it's a bit of a strange feeling Now, I'm actually going to show you this horse coming to life. So, this is not my job. This is the animators doing. So right now, they are getting the pose for uh, the rearing. 
And the animator responsible for the Mavari was Ludwig, my colleague. And he told me that uh, the rearing was the most fun part of the Marwari production. So you see here that he is using real life reference of a Marwari rearing to get a good base and understanding. And then what he's doing is that he's adding the special touch and the special flavor that adds to the characteristic of the horse uh, that it has in Jorvik. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> he's so good. And you, you can also see that the medallions uh, that they have to really jiggle around the neck and he had to animate them uh, by hand and so that they didn't clip and intersect with the model. Uh, it takes long time to do animation. Yeah. In fact, animating a horse at Star Stable takes two months time. And now you have only seen the rearing and the trot, but each horse in Star Stable Online actually has 36 animations that are unique to the horse. Are you... Did the video freeze? But you're, you can still hear me, Peder, or? Yeah, I can hear you. you can yeah. hear me. But oh. I think the video froze. Yeah. Our viewers, they are young people, mostly young people that play Star Stable Online. Um, what kind of tips and tricks would you give them if they wanted to become professional riders and not just keep horses as a hobby? Depends on what goal they have, but if they want to be good, mm. they have to set the goals high. You know, I think that's a very important thing. If you want to succeed, you have to set the goals high, and then you have to be prepared to work really hard to, to get them. Yeah. I think you should uh, surround yourself with um, people that um, are good for you, um, that can help you to reach your goals, that are good uh, in a personal way, but also professional. That, uh, know um, know what they're talking about and know um, what it um, takes uh, to reach the goals. Now, Peter, uh, I went through the modeling of the horse, the texturing, and a little bit about animation. When everything of this is done, it's finally time to put everything into our engine. And in Star Stable, we use something called Pixel Tails Engine. It's the own in-house engine that we use, where all the code, the design, the graphics, the animations, everything comes together. And here, this is the software where we create the world. Here, we can test out the horse. We can look at the different animations that you can see to the right in the menu and scroll be between the different uh, locomotions that the horse has and uh, just have a look that everything in general works and plays as it should. When everything is looked at in the engine like this, it's time to send the horse to QA. And QA is our team called the Quality Assurance Team. They look at the quality of the horse in general. So they, they look at after bugs, they see that the tech, tech doesn't intersect with the body of the horse and just looking in general on everything that the horse is working. And here we have a little clip on something that didn't work quite as well. So here is the Mavari horse in the game and the QA tester is looking at the horse and sees that the bridle is invisible. So when the QA tester saw this, they reported this bug in uh, a tool and this report got sent to one of the people responsible. They fixed this bug, they fixed all the issues, sent back the report and QA looked at the horse again and saw that, okay, this is good, let's move on. And this one, <laughs> this is the American quarter horse bug. <laughs> It's a limping Marvari quarter mix. But why it looked like that is because accidentally, the American quarter horse that we have in game, the skeleton and animation of that quarter horse got put into the Marvari horse when we implemented the horse in the engine. And since the skeletons don't fit together with the Marvari horse, so like the, the, the skeleton of the American quarter horse is completely different, like in size, but also in the length of the back and in the position of the neck in the animations, it didn't work. <laughs> so this is how it can look like if there is a big bug like this. When the horse is finally done, you can start playing it in the engine and in the world and enjoy it 
in its full glory. So here, uh, the player is riding around in the forests of Mistfall. This is a very dense uh, fantasy forest-ish. And uh, jumping on the horse, they are galloping, and uh, you can rear, and you can reverse and go backwards, and it can trot, and just enjoy the horse and the final product in the game. But so, so Peter, now we have sped through the process of creating a horse very fast. Uh, but this whole process of making a horse, it takes uh, from scratch to finished rideable product that you can see here. It takes usually about two to three months. Thank you very much. You know, I really enjoyed this uh, hour. I learned a lot and uh, it was uh, really nice meeting you. And thank you, Peder, for being here today. It has been an honor to talk to you and I've had so much fun. And I hope that you have a great day in the stables. And pet all the horses from me. <laughs> I will, I promise. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. Yay! Bye.